From this moment, you belong to the Belgian underground. You must never speak of your work. One word can cost lives. And we silence tongues permanently. When you join us, you'll give up everything. Family, honor, friends, money. They're all secondary. If you think you can't sacrifice everything, including yourself, you can still withdraw. I'm ready. All right. Do you swear to submit yourself to the orders of the White Brigade? To obey them without question? To devote all your energies to the liberation of Belgium and the destruction of the German army? To accept the discipline of the White Brigade? And to pay with your life for any betrayal, voluntary, accidental, or forced? I swear it. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with the Council on Books in Wartime, presents another program of Words at War, which brings to radio important war books. Tonight we present The White Brigade, a radio play based on the recent book by Robert Goffin. Jean Boucher walks slowly down the streets of Nivelles in Belgium. He's returning home after an unsuccessful attempt to escape to England. Only 18 days, Belgium has been overthrown, destroyed, and bled white. He walks aimlessly through the town. In the middle of what had been a square, German soldiers are taking pictures of their handiwork. Finally, Unable to hold back any more from the dreaded moment when he may find that his wife and child are gone or dead, he... Jean. Jean. Oh, Jean, my darling. Denise. The French police stopped me at the border. Kissan, Daddy. Oh, Anne, little one. Oh, Denise. I've been so afraid, Sean. So afraid. Listen, I was afraid too, Denise. For you. I didn't know what I'd find here. Thank God. Yes, darling. Thank God. But what will happen now? Jean, Jean Boucher, is that you? Yes, Paul, I got your message. It's good to see you again, Jean. Come, let's sit in front of the cottage here. We've got a great deal to talk over. Why did you come back, Paul? You must have known that we lost. Listen, Jean, I have a job to do here. I want to organize real resistance. Give it a head and arms and guidance. Paul, you're making me hope again. But it's so utterly impossible. We're all slaves now. We'll never know freedom again. What can we do? Right now, the main thing is to immerse oneself in the German trough. I'm still a Belgian, Paul. I know, Jean. I don't ask you to make up your mind now. Think about it. Think of your wife and child. And then see Valentin. Valentin who? Just Valentin, that's all you have to know. Be at the Café Metropole Wednesday at four. He'll know you. But why don't you tell me who he is? Don't you trust me? No. What did you say? Listen, Jean. I wouldn't have asked you to come if I didn't trust you as much as I trust myself. It's a terrible thing to say, but for the kind of work that lies ahead, no one has a right to trust even himself too far. What do you mean? Let me explain. The Gestapo summoned me last month. I spent a whole day waiting to be questioned. In the next room, I could hear a Belgian being questioned and tortured. He wouldn't talk at all at first. Then I began to hear cries of pain and shouts of pleasure. I could clearly hear a whip cracking over the poor devil. It went on for hours. Till he was shrieking without a letter. 
Then suddenly there wasn't a sound. And I realized what had happened. What? He gave in. And I couldn't blame him. So you see, Jean, we can't even trust ourselves, let alone others. Yes, I see. You say his name is Valentin? At the Metropole. On Wednesday? That's right, Jean. I shall be there, Paul. Aren't you a friend of Paul Freeman's? Huh? Oh, yes. So am I. Let's sit down. All right. Over here. I'm Valentin. I'm Jean. We have several Jeans already. You live in the Rue Saint-Souci, don't you? Yes. Very well. You'll be Jean Souci. Shall we have some beer? All right. Waiter, two beers. Yes, sir. There's good news. Good news of what? The Fritzes have tried to invade England and failed. Ah, oh, good. See that fat slob over there? Two tables to the left. Watch him. He's Gestapo. Uh -huh. He's one reason I wanted to see you. We need a little information about him. The hours he keeps, where he goes, who comes to see him. Right. You see, uh, <clears throat> I'm not asking you for any heroics yet. That's all right. But how am I to get in touch with you? We want the news soon. You have till Sunday. Tell Paul whatever you found out by then. Is that all? For the moment. Now, let's drink our beer, shall we? Paul, are there many of you? Many of whom? Underground people, like yourself. You mean the White Brigade? I don't know, but I think several hundred. How did you happen to call it the White Brigade? Simple. The Germans formed a black brigade, so ours is white. Uh, but what is the purpose? I mean, these little things, Jean. Our job is to prepare for an Allied invasion. Because I know America will come in. We've got to prepare in every possible way. Incendiarism, sabotage, espionage, murder, whatever helps. We've got to know every move the Germans make and every move they're going to make. I see. But really, Jean, the finest thing of all is this. The Germans have wiped out all the barriers that used to divide us. And Belgians have lost the antagonisms of language, party, and religion. Everyone has the same enemy now. see, my friends, we've got it figured out pretty well now. In order to get these English soldiers out of the country, we send a Belgian with each Englishman. A Belgian who fought and wants to join the English army. What if he stopped? He tells anyone who might ask the man with him is Flemish. That's an excellent idea. Now then, time for the BBC. Will you turn the radio on, Jean? Yes, of course. Keep it very low. You ready to take notes for the newspaper, Malibran? I've got everything right here. This is the BBC in London. Radio Belgium is on the air. We are very fortunate tonight in having with us two Belgians who have just made a daring escape from the occupied country. That's Jean Gillet. I wish I were with him. Dumas must be there too. Under extraordinary... What, 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 what happened to the radio? The fuse must have blown. Look! Look, out this window. What? Down there at the doorway. German soldiers, we're in a trap. German. How do we get out of here? Take it easy, Jean. Take it easy. Don't lose your head. Anyone who has papers on him that might cause trouble, swallow them. Malibran, get rid of those notes. Right. Oh, yes, one thing more. Set the dial for the German station. What for? Are you going to do as I tell you? All right. And now, just an added touch to this charming scene, this beautiful piece of paper on which I have written, we swear our loyalty to our chief, Léon de Grel, vive Rex. That fascist. Where do you want it? On the radio there. That's fine. Now quiet, everyone. They'll be here in a minute. I know what the rotters are up to. 
God help the poor devils they catch. They come into an apartment house about BBC time. They cut off the main electrical meter. Radios and lights go off. Naturally, everyone thinks there's something wrong with the current. That's why you changed the setting on the station. Certainly. While everyone's waiting for the current to come back, the Germans go through the house, put a guard at each door so that when the pig in the basement turns the current on again, they can tell who's listening to England. Hmm, not a bad start. Wait, wait, quiet. The lights are on. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. What's going on here? Hmm? You listen to a German station? Wunderbar. <laughs> hey, what's the sign on the radio? Uh, Rex? Sind Sie Rexisten? Natürlich. Da sind wir ja alle Freunde. Jungfried, sind wir alle Nazis. Heil Hitler. Everything is all right here. Heil Hitler. You see, Jean, one of our members is a cleaning woman at the Kommandantur. She brought us some seals and wrappings that were on a registered parcel sent from Berlin. Ah, I'm beginning to see. They'll come in handy. Yes. We'll wrap up a bomb in them and address it to the traitors de Grell and his secretary, Jean Odekerke. We'll tie it up so that one set of string around it will set the bomb off. I hope both our friends will be there to open it together. Well... What do I do? We'll get you a postman's uniform, bag two. You'll take the parcel to the building. When you get there, you'll probably be stopped by a guard. Now, when he stops you, you tell him. I have a registered parcel for Monsieur de Grell. But he isn't here. And then he'll have to pick it up at the post office. And can't you leave it with me? No, it's registered. It's from a ministry in Berlin. It must be important. It's addressed to Monsieur de Grell and Monsieur Odekerke. Well, let me have it then. I'll take it to Monsieur de Kirke. I have to deliver it myself and see him sign for it. It's the rule. All right, then. Come, I'll take you to Monsieur de Kirke. Monsieur de Kirke? Yes, yes, what is it? Registered parcel from Berlin, sir. Good, put it down here, will you? Would you mind signing, sir? Yes, 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 give me the pencil. Thank you, sir. All right, all right, now get out of here. I have work to do. John, Odekerke is dead. Seven men were killed, seven wounded. There's more work for you to do. This is only the beginning. These outrages performed by Jews and communists, terrorists and troublemakers, must stop. Remember this. The person of every German is inviolate. Any attempt on the life of a German will be followed by swift Retribution. Signed, General von Falkenhausen. They got Malibra. They took his wife and child, too. The German swine are probably cutting him to pieces. So you have nothing to say, hmm? You Belgian louse. <laughs> Why do you keep this up, Molly Bra? Huh? Hmm? You want us here to stay. Why don't you accept it? We Nazis are not savages. All we want is some sign of cooperation, and we'll be your best friends. Tell us what we want to know, and you can go back to your wife and child. They're waiting in the next room now. Well? I think you'll be very sorry that you've been so stubborn. Shorts? Tell him to start on the child in the next room. Oh, well, let's get him up. Yes, I think you'll be sorry you were so stubborn. You fools. 
Can't keep secrets from us forever. No. 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 No, stop. No. Stop it. Leave the child alone. I'll talk. I'll talk. And who killed the Rexus chief? Marcel Rondeau in Spa. I don't know. It wasn't me. I, I swear it on the life of my boy. I would tell you if I knew. But I can't stand anymore. I, I knew. Let me die, but promise you won't do anything more to the boy. Who stabbed the German sentry at Flamalot? I, I helped, but I, I didn't kill Rondos. No. Who is this leader of yours? He used to be called Soucy. Jean Soucy. Who is he? I don't know. Who is he? Come on, answer. Who is this man? What is his real name? I don't know. I swear I don't know. We've learned all we can from this one. Take him out and shoot him. How do you do? I am Madame Malibran. I saw my husband shot. He asked me to warn you that Susie must disappear at once if he doesn't want to go through what my husband did. Malibran. Dead. Last Thursday afternoon, a Belgian policeman came to tell me I was a widow. He gave me a list of the things that George had left in the prison. I went there yesterday. Yes. They aren't just murderers. They're grave robbers. The watch and the ring that I gave my husband when we were married are gone. Denise, the child doesn't get better. She seems worse. And you too. I hate to leave you and the child. Darling, we'll be all right. Please, you must go. <coughs> you must go. Yes, perhaps you're right. It's for Anne and children like her. Well, everything is set. I leave tomorrow morning. But Denise... You must take care of yourself and the child. Don't worry. We'll have your extra ration card. John! John! The German police. The car. They just pulled up in front of the house. Come away from the window. Quick. I'll go up to the attic. I lock myself in with a duplicate key. You hide the other. Tell them I went away yesterday to look for food. If they don't get me, then... When you're sure they're gone for good, knock on the door. And I'll know it's all right to come out. All right. But hurry! Be quiet. My little girl's asleep. Where's your husband? He isn't here. Is he in the attic? Of course not. <coughs> may, may I pick up the child? <coughs> She's frightened. All right. Where's the key to the attic? Don't be frightened, darling. It's all right. Where is the key to the attic? The grocer next door has it. We let him use it. <coughs> oh, mommy. Darling, stop crying. Be a brave little girl. I regret to say, madame, that I must arrest you. But my child... Your child will be sent to a German institution for the rearing of children. No. No, don't take her. Don't take the child. Don't compel me to use force, madame. But the child is ill. She needs me. Look at her. If you were a father... I you... am. But I am a German first. I do my duty. And so must you. What will you do with the child? She will have the finest care. If no charge is lodged against you, you will have her back in a few days. And if she is ill, as you say, she'll get the best treatment. We Germans love children. Here, give the child to me. I 
I came as soon as I could, Denise. You must tell John that the Germans will release the child if he'll give himself up. He's very ill. What? Denise, I want you to promise me that you won't mention a word about the child or the Germans to Jean if you see or write to him. If he hears that they'll release her, he'll give himself up immediately. I should hope he would. Why wouldn't he? There's no danger for him. The Gestapo told me that. Of course they did. That's part of the act. But it's a lie. He'd be shot immediately. I don't believe you. You're just saying that to... What makes you think that he'd be executed? I'll tell you, but you must never repeat it. It was your husband who killed Odekar. <gasps> now do you understand? I must go. I shall try to arrange that you see Jean before he leaves for England. dead. When did she die? Last night. The funeral is tomorrow. I'm going back tonight to be with her. <laughs> Do you remember, Jean? When you began with the white brigade, you took me into a room and pointed to her and said it was for her. <laughs> It's all over now. I should have paid. Not the child. <laughs> Denise, we do not belong to ourselves or to each other anymore. We have to sacrifice. We have no right to give up. We've lost our child. How many thousands of Jews have seen their children killed before their eyes in Poland? Don't you see? John! There's someone behind us! It's only I, Paul. It's time for Jean to go, Denise. Paul. Oh. Anne died last night. Paul. Oh. I'm sorry. Go, Jean. It's doing us no good to stay here. Please go. Let me go back to Anne. Denise. I leave for England tonight. <laughs> I'm glad. Really, I'm glad. <coughs> I've been so worried. I'll be all right. I'll be waiting for your return. Come, John. We must go. Goodbye, my dearest. Be well when I come back. Yes? What is it? What do you want? There's a Madame Denise Boucher outside who says she knows who killed the leader of the Gestapo, Tomka. Ah. So our latest announcement has had results. Bring her in. Come in. What do you know about the Domke affair? The name of the killer. What is it? You're holding a hundred hostages. You announced that they would all be shot unless the killer confessed. That's right. I'll tell you the name of the killer when I can be certain the hostages will be released. I promise you that it will be done. Now tell me the man's name. I'm sorry. I must actually see the order of release before I speak. Very well. But I reserve the right not to release those who may be held on other charges. All right. Here. Yeah? I'll write the order here. To be released immediately. Signed, General von Maringcroft. There, madame. I see. 
The German army is eternally grateful to you and shows its gratitude for your high understanding of your obligation to society. And now tell me, who killed Dumke? I. You? Do you take me for a fool? I'll count the man to order and get the truth out of you. Don't excite yourself, sir. You have the truth. I've been in prison before and no one has ever been able to get more than the truth out of me. Hmm. I hope you are aware that I have gone far beyond the bounds of generosity in this matter. Will you swear that you killed Hauptschar Führer Dumke? Yes. You realize you'll get a death sentence for this? Yes. Well, be good enough to tell me how it was done. Sometime after nine that night, I threw a bomb into the... Ask me to come, my child. Yes, father. I have something to tell you before I die. But I can only tell you under this secrecy of the confessional. What is it? Your secret will be safe with me. I. I didn't kill Donkey. Then. Then why did you give yourself up? To save the hostages. I can understand that. But what was the reason for such a sacrifice? They killed my child. And my husband is dead. He tried to escape to England. I learned later he was killed. But even so, you could go on. You... The Germans might as well have sentenced me to death long ago. I'm dying of tuberculosis. And they starved my daughter to death. Let us pray, my child. Join the White Brigade, you give up everything. Family, honor, friends, money. They're all secondary. If you think you can't sacrifice everything, including yourself, to this work, you can still withdraw. I'm ready. just heard a radio play based on the recently published book, The White Brigade, by Robert Goffin. The book was adapted for radio by Re- Ruth Brooks of the NBC script staff, and participating players were Abby Lewis, Margaret Foster, Dolores Gillen, Les Damon, Ned Weaver, Barry Kroger, Joseph Boland, Edward Cullen, Peter Capel, Herbert Lennard, and Theo Getz. The music was arranged and played by William Meader, and the entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. Next week, Words at War will present a program based on the life of George Washington Carver by Rockham Holt. Words at War is brought to you in cooperation with the Council on Books in Wartime by the National Broadcasting Company and the affiliated independent stations. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>